even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let the King of glory come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the King of glory. We welcome you, King of glory. We welcome you, King of glory. We say, come on into this place this morning. We say, come on in and take your place. We place you in the highest seat this morning. And we say, move by your spirit. For Lord, you say, it's not by might. It's not by power. But by your spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Father God, we just yield to you this morning. We say have your way. Lord, you say many are the plans of a man's heart but God, your purpose will prevail. So we thank you Lord this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your plan and your will will prevail in the mighty name of Jesus. We say Lord let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come, O God. Manifest yourself among your people because God we are here you are here you are with us and we are with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth so Lord we just take control oh God take control of every aspect of this service this morning Lord take control of the ushers take control Lord of the, the congregation take control Lord of those who preach it those who sing it those who sit in take control in the mighty name of Jesus Lord, we say just have your way this morning. You say, he that had clean hands and a pure heart uh -huh, shall stand in your holy mountain this morning. And Lord, we are on your holy mountain in the mighty name of Jesus. So we say, have your way this morning, God. Have your way in the praise and worship. Have your way in the service, Father God. Have your way in the drama, Father God. Have your way in us, O oh God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the preach word of God. Lord, the word will preach like was never preached before, oh God. Lord, you say, out with the old, in with the new, new wine. So we thank you, Lord, this morning for the new wine that will be poured out and manifested in this place. Father God, everyone, oh God, that comes, oh God, to find you, oh God. Lord, let them find you, Lord. You say, when we look for you, all our heart, we shall find you, oh God. Father God, you're looking for the desperate. You're looking for the hungry. You're looking for the thirsty, oh God, to come into your presence this morning. Lord, you say, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled in the mighty name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord. 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 Let's give God glory. Let's give God praise. Give Him praise. Give Him glory. Let us worship Him. Worship Him. Worship. Worship Him. He's worthy to be praised. Lift up your hands, all you gates. The everlasting doors. And let the King of glory come.
serve a wonderful God. We serve a merciful God. We serve a gracious God. We serve a loving God. We serve a redeeming God. We serve a protecting God. We serve an awesome God. We serve a mighty God. We serve the King of Kings. We serve the Lord of Lords. And He's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of our praise. Because if we don't praise Him, the rocks are going to cry out. Some inanimate object will cry out too. But I know about me, I don't know for you, but I know I know I love no rock, no tree. And I got people who love trees, hug trees, worship trees. What can a tree really do for me? Yes, it has a, a purpose. But a tree can do what Jesus can do for me. And I just thank God for being God and God all by Himself. And I welcome you this morning to the presence, the presence, the presence, the presence of the Holy Spirit. On behalf of our pastors, Apostle Oral and Pastor Evelyn Hazel, we welcome you this morning. We welcome you out there in social media land, live streaming. We welcome you. And we thank God that you are here and we know that because you are here God is going to do something for you you just got to tap in and watch God work amen? amen I just I know I know I know we're going to do this here but we're going to do it that everybody could feel comfortable but I think we get so accustomed after COVID not to to greet each other and we go to work we sit about we go to the grocery store we do a lot of things we ain't even wearing masks no more for the matter of fact I just realized in Wild Reef when I went to pick up the script they took down all the things that was barriers so we could just welcome each other this morning we don't have to hug but just greet each other this morning can we do that? Amen. can we just do that? we could just stand and greet each other this morning whatever you are comfortable with please respect each other and I think we should we should we should people losing touch we are getting heartless we don't we don't love at each other anymore this, this COVID can we love at each other this morning can we greet each other this
Sundays and including this one as Holy Convocation. Convocation um, in our uh, realm or it can mean a meeting, but for us it means a holy time to set ourselves apart, a holy time to seek after God. And so today I'm going to be talking about uh, faithfulness. And in, in the time of seeking God, uh, sometimes our flesh is, is bruised. Like we were fasting for 14 days. Your flesh, like, you know, some of us like meat and chicken and, you know, ribs. And, and in those 14 days, we, we, um, we, you know, crucified our flesh, you know. And you didn't realize how much you missed meat until you didn't have meat anymore. Uh, and for some of us, you know, it may quote unquote seem like at the beginning, this is easy. But we missed meat. But we endured to the end, many of us, because uh, it was, number one, a clarion call from the man of God, the head, who said no sweets, no treats, no meats. And so we obeyed that call. And the Bible says, follow him, the man of God, as he follows Christ. So we obeyed that call, and God released for us a blessing. And some of us lost some weight. That was a byproduct, but that's not why we did it. <laughs> Amen. It was a byproduct. Uh, but some of us got something else. You got a deeper walk with Christ. As you abstained from me. And then we came into the house of God two weeks ago. And the Lord released his glory upon all flesh. And it was wonderful. And then last week we came back. And, a, and our Elder Arthur preached a, a spellbinding word. And um, Elisha, I'm going to need you back. And <laughs> God bless his soul. And um, so it, it, a, a word was released in the house about the vine and the branches and staying connected. And he showed us an example that when you're not connected, you dry up. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, he showed us a green uh, piece of branch and a a brown piece of branch and there were both branches but one still looked like it had life in it and the other one it was just no no moisture it was just brown and dry and that's how we get as Christians that we don't stay plugged up like uh, today as we hugged and we greeted each other it was so good 
because it was so long that we had not done that and you know you got to to greet somebody and just say hello covid uh did a, a horrible thing to the world to where we were um you know standoffish and i remember i was in spain and i remember this was right before covid really hit this was in March of 2020. And I was coming through a turnstile, you know, and a lady behind me coughed and I did like this. <laughs> As if her cough was a weapon. And the woman stood behind me so, she wouldn't even, you know the turnstile goes around and you jump in. She wouldn't even move and she was like still like, oh my God. But I couldn't even feel sorry for her because I look out for myself. I didn't know what her cough represented. A cough became a weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> but thank God for Jesus that today we are still here. Many have lost their lives. Many have become sick and still have the repercussion of COVID. COVID didn't just leave some people and just left. Some people still have the repercussions of COVID. But we thank God for his faithfulness to us. We thank God that he remained faithful. Hallelujah. And so today I'm going to talk about us being faithful to him. Amen. And it's not easy. Being faithful may cost us something, but the dividends are priceless. Let's read the word right quick. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. Father, I thank you for this day that you've given all of us. I thank you, God, that in today as I speak your word, I pray that your thoughts become my thoughts. Your words become my words that I will speak only of you and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Father, I pray that as your people online and those who are sitting in the house of God, that they will receive from your hand, from your mouth, what has been said, and I pray that they will apply it unto their heart, Father God. We are only here for your purpose. We are only here, Father God, for your dictates in our life because we are not our own. And we realize that. So, Father God, I pray that you will anoint the words that I would speak and bless your people, I pray. Amen. 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 Genesis 22, 1 and 2, and it reads, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Let's look at um, Genesis 22, 11 and 12. Genesis 22, 11 and 12. And as you're looking for that, I just want to say, that God himself in a dream spoke to Abraham and he gave him an assignment and then he gave him a place where that assignment should take place and sometimes the call on our lives will cause us to shift and move to another place a place maybe you don't know of a place you don't want to go like I told God I don't ever want to go to India what does he send me to India uh, so, so you have to be careful because we are not our own and why I said I didn't want to go to India I saw the suffering and, I, and it was just so bad that I just didn't want to experience that but God allowed me to go with my dad and it was such a blessing my dad and I double preached I gave him the mic he gave it back to me I gave him the mic he gave it back to me and I mean, it was such a flow. And families of the earth were blessed. Uh, so we have to be careful when God gives us an assignment that we don't try to put a comma, an exclamation point, a colon, just do what he says, period. Do what he says. 
and don't add or take away. Genesis 22, 11 and 12. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, talking about Abraham, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. So we know the story, how Abraham went to another land, took his son uh, to slay him, to kill him in, in our terminology. And Abraham did not complain. He took his son to Moriah, the place that God told him to go to, and he was about to slay his son. But let's continue reading. He says, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither or neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withhold thy son, thy only son, from me. Hallelujah. Abraham was faithful to the word that God spoke to him, even though it was a hard word. It was a hard word because God gave you a child. First of all, Abraham and his wife had a hard time getting that child. They got that child in their old age and that child was the apple of their eye. And even if that child was bad, disrespectful, it was their child. But God said to Abraham, slay that child. He couldn't even tell his wife. If he had told his wife, she would have ran away with that boy in the night. She was not going to be, I could speak for Sarah. She was not going to be on board. Are you kidding me? Abraham, you weren't the one pushing. She would have talked all kinds of smack to Abraham, but he was not killing her child. Sometimes you got to hold what God said to you in your heart. But a lot, of a lot of times we tell, and we tell, and we tell, and next thing you know, they tell, and they tell, and they tell, and next thing you know, the purposes of God is diluted because now people are talking against what you're supposed to do, and they're jealous because of what you're supposed to do, and next thing you know, you don't do all of what God said to do because maybe they have talked you out of it. I remember when the Lord told me to go to Bible school, I told my mom, my mom says, and leave that job. She said, people die in those kinds of jobs. That was my mother. But I know what God said. So you have to be careful when you discuss what God said for you to do. So Abraham was obedient and he took his son to Moriah to slay him. Let's look at Genesis 22, 13 through 17. Genesis 22, 13 through 17. Amen. I'm gonna read for the sake of time. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So that scripture right there proves the faithfulness of God. It not only talks about the provision of God, which we all know, that Jehovah Jireh means God will provide. A lot of times we use that. Jehovah Jireh, my provider. We even think his grace is sufficient for me. So Abraham got to really experience the provision of God. But not only that, I saw something today that I've never seen. Let's read the end part of Genesis 22, 13 and 17. And Abram called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So we see that his faithfulness created sight or vision. In the mount at the top. In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So when you're faithful to God, 
to accomplish what he's told you to do. He's going to open up your sight to see what you could not see before. Vision. When we're in a battle, when we're in a storm, when we're in a trial, and we can't see no way out, we have to realize that God sees everything. And because we are his children, what he sees, he shows us. But we have to stay submitted. Because if we jump off of the frying, uh, the, the pot, the, the, the fire, we jump off because it's too hot. Then you won't be fully cooked. <laughs> you won't be fully matured for your eyes to be open to see what God sees. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abram out of heaven the second time and said, By myself, this is, uh, I think, further down, and I didn't have it written down. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abram out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withhold thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies Ebosata. when we submit to God his faithfulness releases a blessing to us and not only you who are you the one who walking in the fire it releases a blessing to your seed hallelujah. hallelujah and God was so invested in the life of Abraham he swore by himself now you know in that day when they they swore it was something that was a connection when, 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 when I swear to you, sometimes they touched you. Sometimes they brought something, maybe money, and they swear, I swear by this money that so and so and so. But God swore by Himself, the great and mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And He said, In blessing, I will bless thee, and in multiplying. I will multiply thy seed. Now keep in mind that Abraham and Sarah, they were barren. They were barren. And God saw it fit to bless them with the child. And here's God saying that your seed will be multiplied more than the sand on the seashore. You know we have sand in this region. And can you imagine all of the little pieces of sand and God is saying that I'm going to bless you so much that your seed will be more than the sand on the seashore. Let's look at Genesis 31, 11 and 13. And I'm going to talk about somebody else who was faithful to God, Jacob. Jacob. When you're faithful to God and when God call you, sometimes when he call you, you know, you begin to rejoice and you're happy because the Lord has called you, the Lord has saved you, you know, uh, maybe you're the first one in your family to be saved and you're so happy. But with the calling comes a responsibility. And you have to realize that you're not only in this thing for you. Like uh, Abraham, he was in it for what God was going to do through his seed. Jacob as well. Genesis 31, 11 through 13. And it reads, And the angel of God spoke, spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. And I said, Here am I. Remember, Abraham said the same thing. Here am I. Faithfulness causes us to again submit to the will of God. So that when he calls you, you say, here am I. You don't ask God, why are you calling me? You don't, You called me last week. Why? You said, here am I. 
And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see all the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled, and gristled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. I am the God of Bethel, where thou appointest the pillar, and where thou vowest a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. So a lot of us know the story that uh, Jacob went into the land where his uncle was, Laban. And uh, he went there because he was on a run because of something that he did. Now, Jacob, the Bible said he was a surplanter. So what does that mean? He was a trickster. But God wanted to change Jacob from being a, a trickster to being a mighty man of God. And so he went to serve his uncle, Laban. And Laban said, you know, if you come and you serve with me, I will give to you my daughter. Now, back in the day, they married their cousins. You know, it's just the way it was. And so uh, his cousin, Rachel, was beautiful. And the Bible says her sister Leah, said, what did the Bible say? She had a... She, she was um, tender-eyed. The <laughs> Bible is so generous. He didn't say she was ugly. He said she was tender-eyed. And uh, I think it sounded like... I, I was going to do it. I was going to do what my version of that eye was, but it's not nice. Because everybody's not made the same. Some people have different impediments. And, you know. But that's what the Bible said. She was tender-eyed. The Bible was so kind. And so you know the story that uh, in those days, um, you know, they, they were Jewish. So the women covered their faces like this. And when they went to bed, their faces kept covered. So uh, Jacob didn't know who was in the bed with him. But in the morning, it was Leah and not Rachel. That devil is crazy. <laughs> I got married, said the vows, and woke up the next morning, and his eyes beheld, his eyes beheld the tender-eyed one, the not-so-pretty one. Now, see, these are things that people, and you wonder why people kill sometimes and murder, because he was done an injustice. He went to his uncle, his uncle says, you know, she is the oldest one in, in our culture, that's the way it is. But you gave your word, Laban, that you were gonna give him Rachel. After he served seven years for Rachel, he was done an injustice. But Jacob remained faithful because there was a prize. And he worked seven more years for Rachel, that's 14 years to wait on your promise. And in those 14 years, can you imagine him saying, God, you're not faithful to me. And while he's working, his uncle is cheating him on his wages. Double jeopardy. But he's still faithful and he's serving for the prize. We don't serve God for naught. We do not serve God for naught. If you serve God, heaven belongs to you. Amen. Number one. But while you're on earth, there remains a blessing for the children of God who serve God with all their heart, their soul, their mind. But I'm here to tell you that there are times when on this road of serving God, things hit us down and knock us down and, and there are thorns and thistles in our way. And sometimes we have to cry, we mourn. It's not easy. But you have to get up and stay the course because there is a prize if we faint not. Amen. So God gave Jacob a strategy. And he would take the cattle and the sheep down 
to a watering place and there the sheep began to reproduce because of the strategy that God gave him. And next thing you know, he had more sheep and more cattle than his uncle Laban. And at the set time, see, trouble don't last always. It seems like it lasts when you're going through the hot places. But God gave him a strategy. And then at the set time, he told his uncle, I'm leaving with all my children and my two wives. And of course, the father was now going to lose two daughters because when they left, I mean, they traveled. And he was not happy, but it was time to go. And God blessed Laban, I'm sorry, God blessed Jacob as he left uh, Laban and he went with all, I mean, the Bible says it was hundreds of cattle that he had. And he had to separate them so that uh, if a bandit came you know, upon them, because as they traveled, sometimes they were attacked. But he had a system so that, you know, if something happened to one section, it wouldn't happen to all. And so he was going on his way. But remember, he fleed from his hometown because he had done wrong to his brother. But now he's going back home. And he's praying and he's sacrificing, he's asking God, I mean, he's really begging, God have mercy on me because if I, you know, am smitten, the Bible says smite the sheep or the head and the flock will scatter. So now if his brother had killed him, what would become of his family? So he's praying. I mean, he is doing what he need to do. He put his head on a hard rock. He did all kinds of things. He saw visions of angels going up and coming down. He prayed. And the Bible says that his brother was coming. And he was not in faith. He wasn't fair. He wasn't fair. But his brother did what he did not expect. His brother loved on him. And his brother received him. I'm telling you, faithfulness will cause you to leap over a wall of resistance. Faithfulness will cause you to, to experience miracles that you had no idea God would do for you. His brother forgave him. He wanted to bless his brother. His brother said, I have enough. Can you imagine this? I'm trying to bless you. And you say, I'm good. That's how God wants us to be. Hallelujah. And so he went back home. But here's the blessed thing I like about this story. That Jacob then, you know, he had children by his two wives. And God saw it fit that he, he put a blessing on his son, Joseph. We know the story. Joseph had a dream and his brothers became jealous of that dream now let me press the pause button and say this sometimes when we sow a bad seed you sow a bad seed into the earth God forgave you you ask God to forgive you God forgave you but there's a, there's a scripture that says when a man soweth that will he also reap sometimes your children reap it your grandchildren reap it. Your great, great, great grandchildren reap it. Because you sowed that seed. If you sow into the earth a mango seed, guess what? An orange will not come up. An apple won't come up. A mango is going to be reproduced. And it's not going to be one mango on the tree. It's going to be several mangoes keep that in mind so I'm going to tell you the story of what happened but I'm going to give you a nugget we have the gift of prayer which you can ask God to uproot the seed that you sow uproot that seed destroy it so that my generations won't suffer what I did 
But let's go back to the story. So, Joseph dreamt a dream given by God. His brothers were so jealous because he was saying, all oh, y'all gonna bow down to me. And they're like, you? You're the youngest among us. And they threw him into a pit. Left him for dead. But God. God remembered the faithfulness of Jacob. God remembered the faithfulness of Abraham, which was in the lineage. God sent some people to rescue him. Next thing you know, he's put into a nice home and he's serving. And we know the story. The, the, the master's wife looked upon him and said, hmm, he sure is fine. The man is minding his business, doing his work. As my husband says, sitting here somewhere. And next thing you know, he was attacked. Joseph refused to compromise his faith. And he said, no. He said no. And when he said no, he was thrown into prison. But Joseph maintained his integrity in the Lord. And at the set time, God delivered him out of the prison and made him a governor. God's purposes, even though it took a long time, and you know the Bible talks about long suffering being a gift of the spirit, a gift or a fruit is one of them. I think it's a, it's a fruit. Thank you, sir. A fruit of the spirit, long suffering. Jesus, I felt that thing. Woo. Today I saw one wonderful woman of God, Sister Blanche, come in the house. Sister Blanche is a founding member of this ministry. And she went away and she walked in today and she said, who is that man praying? My husband. <laughs> Hiya. She knows how long I waited on the Lord. Never married until I was 56. And I thought I was 57 when I got married. It wasn't until I made my birthday in March and then I was 57 again. I'm the but he, he told me you're 57 <laughs> Isn't that crazy <laughs> Sometimes he just say Oh it's another birthday Just whatever And you forget your age You know And I, Anyway Praise the Lord So got married At 56 And waited on the Lord Because God had a purpose And a plan And God's purposes and plans were more important in the big scheme of things than what my plans were. His plans and his purposes are past finding out. When God says, I need you to go, I could just go. But thank God he gave me such a wonderful man. An invitation came in last week to go to Pakistan. He said, go. And then Another invitation came in again this week to go to Cape Town and Pakistan. And I was like, oh Lord, how am I going to tell the man of God? So I went to him. He said, go. So see, God gave me the right man. I know people have been married 30, 40 years in the ministry and their husbands won't let them do what God says to do. Says, no, you can't go. There's a blessing when you are obedient and you stay the course and you go through your long suffering, there's a blessing on the other side. Amen. So Joseph came out of jail and now he's the governor. God had it so that Joseph not only saved the nation that he was living in, because remember he was sent, to, sent away. He saved 
sheep his father's nation, which was Egypt. Let me say one more thing that I forgot to say. When you are faithful to God, God will change your nature. He will change your name. If you are known as a trickster, if you are known as a gangster, he will change your name and nature. In the Bible, God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Israel was a complete nation. But first, it, it was a name given to Jacob. And out of the name Jacob came Israel, which became a nation. Keep that in mind. So, Joseph is now the man in charge. He's the governor, the prime minister, the president. And there was a famine in the land. And God gave him a strategy. Somebody say a strategy. He gave Jacob a strategy, his father. And now he gave Joseph a strategy. Save all of the corn and the wheat while it's a time of plenty, it's a time of prosperity, but don't waste it all, save. And so he began to save and stockpile grain and then seven years of famine dropped on the region. He was able to feed people as the woman of God said, and they had more than enough. But check this out. Genesis 42, six. Genesis 42, six. Hallelujah. And it reads, And God spake unto Israel, who is Jacob, in a vision of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. And he says, I am God, the God of thine father. Fear not to go down to Egypt. For I will make, I will there make of thee a great nation. I will go down with thee into Egypt and I will surely bring thee up again and Joseph shall put his hand upon thine eye and Jacob arose. He rose up from Beersheba and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives in the wagons which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. I never saw that. I never saw that Pharaoh sent a wagon to transport Jacob to his divine place and destiny. Now, let me tell you who Pharaoh was. He was, and you know, they would say the Pharaoh because the name was a title that went on and on and down into the generation. So the Lord had it so that because of the faithfulness of Joseph, his father was now transported to a place where there was food because where they were living, there was no food. And God had it so that he went inside. It may say a wagon, but if the wagon came from a Pharaoh, it wasn't a jalopy. It probably was a wagon with cushions and rails. Just imagine, the Pharaoh sent him a Cadillac or uh, what's another good car? A Hummer or a Mercedes or an Escalade because it was the Pharaoh. When God bless you, as you are faithful in the house of God. Sometimes we do things in the house of God and nobody sees. And nobody knows what you're doing. And sometimes it's inconvenient to come early to the house of It's inconvenient to get up and come early to the house of God. But you know what? Be faithful. Be faithful. 
I'm gonna take up my sister, Mona. You don't see her doing anything around here, right? But Mona blesses her pastor. Yesterday, one of my brothers um, called all the girls together, there's five of us, and um, he says, uh, I want y'all to, you know, um, have something that he had brought for us. And so it was something that we all wanted. So he says, well, do a raffle. Mona says, I wanted to go to pass. The pastor wasn't even in the mix. He's not one of the girls. And she's sitting up talking about, I wanted to go to pastor. So they picked and guess who wanted? Pastor Evering wanted, so he went to pastor. You can be faithful by your giving. You can be faithful by your prayers. You can be faithful by your service. And I want to tell you, in so doing, you can be offended. Because the same pastor she's looking out, one day he may say, be talking about her, and she hear it, and he don't know that she hear it. And all of a sudden, I'm not faithful to him anymore. He was talking about me. And that's how the devil works. He sows seeds of discord. He does. Even with families, he sows seeds of discord because he has a picture that's way ahead of where we are today. He sees what you don't see way ahead so that what he wants is for generations to be disconnected. You're in the house of God serving, cleaning the house of God. Nobody sees like Brother Godfrey and, and Minister Sharon does. A lot of times he come on Saturday when nobody's here and he cleans the house of the Lord. This man is a busy man. But I want to tell you, reaping time is coming. Harvest is coming. God does not forget seeds. God is a God that if you plan to see he's going to bless that seed. Then he's going to multiply that seed. And he's going to cause that seed to be a blessing to many. Keep serving. What am I saying? Continue to be faithful. And you know what? If something happened on the way. And you stopped doing something that you did. Pick up your cross. Pick up that mantle. We only sometimes see the mantle as the men of God carrying the mantle of the apostleship. No, you have a mantle to carry. Your service is your mantle. Your service is as a, as a cloak that you carry. And a lot of times it's a cloak of many beautiful colors. It's beautiful to go to a house of God and see everything in order. And, and, and sometimes it takes your breath away like, who these people are just serving God as they serve the house of God. The man, man of God and I were privileged to go to a church in Orlando that had 4,000 people. But those people were working. Oh my God. It's easy to go to a big house and to say the other person will do it, you know. And I'm gonna just sit back and enjoy what the other person does. But we were so blessed to see this house just operating and functioning. And I mean, I was just tremendously blessed. And it, it caused me to wanna be even more faithful where I'm planted. There's a song that says, Bright in the corner where you are. Hallelujah. So, okay, so we know the story about, uh, you know, Jacob and the whole nation of Israel being blessed as a result of Joseph. Let's go to somebody else. The last person I want to talk about is David. My God, my God. David suffered. After he got the word from God, as he was sitting here somewhere in the field, minding his business, tending to the flock, there was a great prophet in the land called Samuel. 
Samuel went to the house of David and all his brothers were assembled. And uh, Samuel wanted to anoint the next king, had his oil with him. And um, he saw one that looked strong and wise and stately. And he was going to pour the oil on his head. And the oil says, not me. I'm not coming in connection with something that God did not say. And the oil stayed. It did not flow. And oil, water, is something that if you caught, if, you, if it's in a container and you tilt it, it flows. It just does. But when God has a place for you in destiny, he will cause things to not work. If things are outside of alignment of what he said, then Samuel go again to anoint another brother and the oil wouldn't work. Keep in mind, the Bible says about Samuel, not one of his words fell to the ground. Not one. He was a mighty, mighty prophet. But yet this time, he missed it. He missed it. And that could have been embarrassing. But God caused David to come on the scene. One who was not expected. Who did not look like the right one. Who did not fit the image of a king. And God anointed David to be king. After he was anointed, he was all happy. And then nothing happened. It seemed like his promise was eluding him. The more he, you know, tried to get in position, the thing went away from him. And the king who was in place tried to kill him on more than one occasion. But when God anoints your head for service, you will, you must complete the assignment. When God anoints your head for service, hell itself can be thrown at you. And if you are in position, you will complete that assignment. So the Bible says about David, he was not just the king of one region, but he was the king of two regions. God will give you double for your trouble. Stay the course. Stay faithful. Can you imagine? David could have given up. God caused a person who was the king's son, Jonathan, to encourage David, to befriend David, to do good to David when he was discouraged. And so when David became king, he remembered Jonathan. But now Jonathan is dead. So he remembered Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth. And the Bible says that at the king's table, can you imagine the king's table back in those days? It was a long table of all kinds of dignitaries. Maybe the, the chief of staff and the, the chief uh uh, the heads of state and the, the military person in front of the general was at the table. And David remembered the faithfulness of Jonathan, his friend, who was now dead. And he called for Mephibosheth, who was a castaway. He was lame in his legs. So maybe he couldn't work. Because back in that day, it's not like now where they make provisions for people who are handicapped. It wasn't like that in those days. But David put Mephibosheth to sit at his table. And he says, for the rest of your life, I'll provide for you. Because of the faithfulness of his father. So you see that when you're faithful, it's more than you that is being blessed. And even if you don't have children, it doesn't matter. God bless whoever you're associated with. Because
because of your faithfulness. My dad, back in um, about maybe 10, 12 years ago, was driving a van and the accelerator stuck. And he said school children were walking and he says he had to make a quick decision. It was either hit the school children or hit something like a wall. So he decided to hit the wall. And the, the steering wheel was an iron steering wheel. And his chest went into the steering wheel and bent it. And the steering wheel hugged his chest. And he could not move. He could not extricate himself. And he said, but he couldn't lift his head. And he lifted his head and he saw somebody coming down. And he said, this person that came down like out of the clouds had on tattered clothes. So in his distress, he's thinking, well, where did this old person, this person come with all these dirty clothes? How, how could they have come out of heaven? Surely he wasn't thinking it was an angel because they were so dirty looking. And the person opened his door and pushed him back to where now he's seated in the chair. And then left and went back up. Then he said he heard a voice saying, and God came down. Oh, Jesus! And he said, and God came down. And he said, it's because of your faithfulness. Your faithfulness will preserve your life. Your faithfulness will preserve the life of your children yet unborn. Your children, children, children. Do not be wary in well-doing. For as to a while, see, in the meantime, in the meantime could be mean sometimes. You receive a reward if you faint not. You receive a reward. We don't serve God for naught. Saints, all I want to say to you is get back on your horse. If this message is touching your heart, it's not to condemn you, it's to say to you, get back on your horse. You may have fallen on the way, Talk to Jesus, get it right, and get back on your horse and ride it to victory. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Though none go with me, though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. Though none go with me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back, I have decided, I have decided to follow Jesus.
let's pray. We're going to pray a prayer of recommitment, every one of us. Because, you know, when one of us draw back, we all do. We're in this thing together. I need you to survive, Elder Cleon. I need you to survive. I need you to survive, Sister um, Stacy. I need you. I need you to survive, Minister Sonia. I need you. But you know what? The Lord have need of thee. The Lord has need of thee. Not only in the sanctuary, but on your job. The Lord has need of you to be faithful to him, to serve him with joy and gladness. When you see other people getting promoted and you're not getting promoted, be faithful. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your people. Here we are in your presence. Father, we recommit ourselves to you. This day, Father God, even as the man of God is away and is not here, God, we can recommit ourselves to the service of this house. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray that you would cause us to be planted and set in this house to bring your name glory and praise. Father, we declare unto you, today is a day of turning. Today, as we have consecrated ourselves for 14 days, as today is the combination of our convocation, we declare that we are not the same when we first started. God, in the name of Jesus, anoint each of our head with oil and let our cup run over and Father God let our service to you be as an incense that goes up into your nostril and bless you God let our service bless you allow our lives to be hid in Christ with God Father God we commit our ways unto you and we ask that you bring our ways to pass even according to your scriptures bless us each one to go higher and yet deeper God take us by your spirit in realms of glory as we wait upon you for our change we've made a decision God to follow you and to follow you to the very end so keep us from falling according to your word that you will present us faultless before your throne of grace and glory. We thank you, Father God, for the commitment and the recommitment of your people in this house today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God.
do what he needs to do. Amen. With that, we're going to take communion this morning. Uh... 